Hi, my name is Angel and this week I decided I want to turn my brain into mush and read a bunch of extreme horror or books that have been called very disturbing. I am that type of person that is always seeking out the most disturbing things they can find and like movies and books so i've read a handful of disturbing books but i have some that i haven't read yet because i've been waiting to do this video so i've got a list of five books that i'm going to read this week so i have one that is a physical copy and then i have four that are on kindle unlimited because kindle unlimited seems to be like the hub for just weird horror books but the first book that i have is zombie by joyce carol oates I think this one popped up because it was similar to American Psycho, so it got recommended to me after I read American Psycho. I actually have zero clue what this plot is about, so we'll see. Then the other books I have to read are Brother by Anya Alborn. This, I've read my first Anya Alborn book in May, I believe, and that was The Shuddering. This one has been on my list for a while and I see it talked about everywhere. Like I said, I was just waiting to film this to do it. This one is the only one that I kind of remotely know the plot of and I think it's like a family of cannibalistic serial killers and the one of the sons like doesn't want that life so he's trying to escape or something. I don't know, but I've heard it's just absolutely brutal and gory, so very excited for that. The next one I have is Cows by Matthew Stoko. I think that's his name. I'm not 100% sure. This one, I absolutely have zero clue about the plot, but I have seen it everywhere for years. Talked about as being, like, just extremely messed up and disturbing, and I've always kind of put it off, but I saw it was on Kindle Unlimited, so... I'm like well why not read it if it's free and then the last two I have are novellas just to make it kind of reasonable that I'm gonna get through all five this week so the first novella I have is a hundred percent match this one I know a little bit of the plot I think it's a guy that's like I don't know <laughs> okay apparently I don't know the plot it's like a guy that is single and like tired of being single so he like tries to find like his perfect match but through some very unconventional and gross ways. I don't know if that's even accurate at all. Don't take my word for it. Just wait till I start reading the book and then I'll tell you about it. And then the last novella I have is Nobody Rides for Free. This one, once again, I have no clue what the plot is, but I know it's supposed to be an extreme horror book and I think it's only around 80 pages, so it should be a pretty quick read. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. I don't know if my brain will still be functioning at the end of this week, but I think the first book I'm going to pick up is 100% Match, just because it is a novella, so it'll be a quick little intro kind of to throw me into this and get me ready for the vibe. And I've also seen this book everywhere. Literally, Goodreads itself has been suggesting this book to me for months, so I'm going to finally read it. I just sat here for like five minutes talking about these books, and I just realized that it didn't record the entire time. So here we are again. Me and Shrek, we're here to talk to you. I finished 100% Match. I didn't film too much of like the reading progress itself because it is a novella so it was like very quick. Like there wasn't a lot to really update you on while I was reading it. I think I'm gonna give 100% Match three stars so let's talk about it a little bit. It is most definitely gross and disturbing and creepy. There is animal cruelty in it um, which I'm not a big fan of. I mean who is a fan of that? That was like a weird way to word that, but you get what I mean. So it's definitely got that going for it. However, I found the writing style, like it wasn't my favorite. It is written very much like I did this and then I did this and then I did this and then I did this. And for me, it just felt like sort of disconnected. And we also didn't get a lot of like backstory on this character and like why he is the way that he is or what his reason or motivation for doing these things are it honestly seemed like it was just gross for shock value and if that's what you're into then that's fine but i feel like for me to enjoy like an extreme horror book i need to have some sort of connection or like backstory on these characters and like why they are so messed up or just a little bit more insight into their thoughts like i said it it was just very much like I did this I did this or even the dialogue like when he was talking to other people like their sentences would be in quotations as like dialogue and then it would be like I told her this instead of 
having like a conversation with quotation marks from both people. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just felt kind of disconnected and I just didn't really see the point as I was reading it. It did take a little bit of a turn towards the end, which isn't entirely unexpected. I feel like it's probably pretty easy to guess that that's where the book is going to go, but that did make me enjoy the story a little bit more because it did kind of mix it up and make it a little bit different. But overall, the story still kind of was pretty average to me. It was just kind of meh. I think it was really mainly like the writing style that kind of made me not enjoy it so much, not really the content of it. So I think I'm going to stick with three stars, 2.5, 2.75, somewhere around there for a 100% match. Okay, first of all, ignore. If you can hear System of the Down in the back, just ignore that. Anyways. I'm about to start No One Writes for Free, and I'm honestly, like, a little bit nervous. I read some of, like, the content warnings for this book, and I've seen so many people say that it's just, like, brutal and disgusting, which is the point of this video, but I'm still a little bit nervous to start it, so wish me luck. At least it's a short one. It's on Kindle. It says it's 76 pages, so that shouldn't take me very long to get through, and I will come back and update you. Well, hello again. It is me, sitting in the exact same spot with Shrek. After I finished 100% Match, I just went ahead and started No One Rides for Free. Since they're both, like, short novellas or around the same page count, I decided just to read them both today. So, No One Rides for Free. I definitely enjoyed the writing style of that a lot more than 100% Match. It was kind of the same thing where we don't get a lot of, like, backstory on the villain or, like, a motivation or reason for why he's doing this. But I think the way that it was written still kind of has you involved. You're, like, right up in the action. It is very, very fast-paced. And even though it is brutal and graphic and just supremely messed up, like because of the way that it's written and how fast-paced it is like I just wanted to keep reading and reading and reading even though it was like ah, uh, like I don't want to because it's so messed up but I do want to because I want to know what's going to happen I did like the ending of that one I think the ending was exactly what I wanted it to be which is really really good I also appreciated the little author's note at the end where she talks about kind of what inspired her to really write something so messed up it really feels like the book's point was to just demonstrate how horrible people can be sometimes and it definitely achieved that um you know it's graphic and it's brutal but I'm sure it happens there are people like that in the world that are just sick and twisted so this book really achieved what I think it set out to do and like I said I also appreciated how in the author's note she spoke about how she herself is a survivor of sexual abuse so I appreciated that as well and just the way she talked about why she would choose to write something like this. I feel like it's hard though to give a rating to a book like this because obviously the content is very graphic and hard to read but I did enjoy the writing style. I think for right now I'm just gonna leave it without a rating. I don't think it was a bad book. Like I said it was well written and brings you right into the action, very fast paced. Obviously the content is very hard to read. It's got a very long list of trigger warnings so definitely look those up. This is very much like very extreme horror so if you are someone that regularly reads extreme horror I would say you know you'll probably be safe reading this but if you're someone who doesn't like definitely prepare yourself before going into something like this. I think it's a book that set out to achieve a certain thing and it definitely got that point across. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. I don't know what book I'm going to start next, but I'll see you again when I've got an update. Alrighty, today I started Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates. I am on page 115 and I really truly have been struggling through this book the writing style first of all is like very hard for me to get through just it's very like stream of consciousness like it almost kind of reads like a journal entry especially because we get like these little drawings that the character has made so it kind of feels like it's just a journal but it's not it's like weird because it's most of it is first person and this person's thoughts but then there's also like 
third person at times and I don't know if it's the main character just referring to himself in third person but it's a little bit confusing and kind of hard to get through at times and I can definitely see why it's compared to American Psycho because American Psycho I feel like it's the same way where you're just in this person's mind and it's absolutely like a chore to get through and to like live in their mind and see all their thoughts and it just it didn't work for me in American Psycho and I know American Psycho like the point of it was to be hard to read but this one I don't know if it's trying to make that same point where it's like tedious to read but that is exactly how it's coming across another thing I don't really understand like in the synopsis they tell us this guy's name is Quentin P but throughout the book he's referring to himself as QP which I don't know if you guys can see that probably not but it's like Q line P line and I'm like I just don't understand what purpose that serves if we already know his name it's not like it's a secret or anything there are also like so many words in here that are just like randomly capitalized just throughout the sentence which kind of disrupts the flow a little bit and I'm not hating like a unique writing style there's nothing wrong with that it's just very very hard for me to get through so as well as it being a little bit difficult to read it's also I hate to say it I am so bored <laughs> like I literally am so bored which shouldn't be the case because of the content of a book like this like it's very brutal and graphic there is so much racism and just gruesome and gross and sexually disturbing things that I shouldn't be bored during a book like this but I am and I hate that. I think if this book was any longer than it is I probably would DNF but it's only 181 page I think this copy is 181 pages so I don't have that much longer to go so I am gonna push through and finish it but I don't think it will get a very high rating. Also another thing I want to know is like this story really really reminds me of Jeffrey Dahmer and I wonder if it is inspired. I feel like it has to be because it's like if you know like Jeffrey Dahmer, I mean <laughs> who does it in this day and age? There's like a million movies about him. Basically like what he was trying to do is like create the perfect like sexual partner and make it so that they couldn't like run away from him or like talk to him so that he would like destroy parts of their brain and you would end up killing them on accident and that's like what the main character in this book is doing he's trying to create like a zombie for sexual purposes so he's like doing ice pick lobotomies on these people and it's very like it's just reminding me a lot of Jeffrey Dahmer and I feel like it's probably inspired by that anyway I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish this tonight and I will update you guys when I've got an update I'm back with some updates. I finished Zombie and I think I'm gonna give it two and a half stars. It really didn't do anything for me and I was just kind of bored the whole time and it was pretty much like a chore to really get through that book. Don't really have any other thoughts um, <laughs> that I haven't already said. It just was not it for me, but I guess it wasn't the worst thing ever. I think this is Bebe. You're so cute. This morning I started Cows by Matthew Stoko, and I just got to chapter 14 and I needed to pause because what the fuck did I just read? My last chapter was just completely unhinged. I don't really understand why that happened. Today I started Cows by Matthew Stoko. Still don't know if that's how you say his name. And I have a lot to say about this one. So I don't know even really where to start. My very first impression when starting Cows was that it reminded me of the Wasp Factory. Just the way that it was set up and we're following like this boy who is alone with a parent in just a weird living situation. It really reminded me of the Wasp Factory and I absolutely hate it. 
that book. I hated the Wasp Factory. But that's a story for another time. So, basically the premise of Cows is we have this 25-year-old named Steven who lives in a pretty shitty apartment with his mother who is absolutely horrible and abusive and his really only companion is a dog that is named Dog that is paralyzed because his mother threw a brick at it at one point, I guess. And he refers to his mother constantly as the hag beast. So that's a little bit of a setup. And then he gets this job at a slaughterhouse, slaughtering cows, obviously. So he gets this job there. The boss is like a really weird dude and is like, oh, you have to go to the slaughter room and like kill these cows because it'll change you as a person and it'll make you like more as a man or whatever the logic is with that. And then we also have this character, I think her name was Lucy, that lives in the apartment above them and they have like a weird relationship but she's like kind of crazy and she's convinced that there's like this poison or this like black stuff inside of her and she wants to like cut it out so she's like, I don't know, it just, <laughs> there were so many different aspects of this plot and it was very strange to say the least. I can most definitely say that so far to date this is the most like disturbing like disgusting book that I've ever read but my issue with that is that there the plot wasn't enough for me. Maybe I'm just like too dumb because a lot of people praise this book highly because they're like oh like it's so complex and like there's such an interesting story and like yeah there is like a complex like a deeper story happening throughout but you have to really like get through all of this like just absolutely disgusting stuff to kind of get little hints of like the message that the book is trying to get across and it just to me was not worth it like it wasn't there wasn't enough of like a redeeming story to make me actually truly want to read this book i did dnf uh shortly after the halfway point little spoiler warning here if you do want to read this book one day you're planning to just skip to this timestamp. um basically if you're here for the spoilers the reason that i dnf'd first of all i was thinking of dnfing it already but then we got to the point where so basically like the main character like his whole goal is to kill his mother because like she's a horrible person so like go off you know get it she's abusive and she just is a terrible person but before literally like right before he accomplishes this goal of killing her she kills the dog and I don't know I just hated everything about that scene she like I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because it was very descriptive in the way that this dog was killed and like the way that its body reacted to the violence that was enacted on it. Also, while we're talking about spoilers, when I filmed that clip of that I had just gotten to chapter 14 and I was like, what the fuck just happened? So chapter 13, he's like working at the slaughterhouse and he goes like to the slaughter floor to like kill the cow and I don't know. The people that work like in the actual like slaughter area I guess have some like weird cult going and they <laughs> I don't know how to explain this in the best way but bestiality occurs and that's why I was like what is going on it just really felt like so many of the things that happened were just so unrealistic like be for real like nobody acts like that like that doesn't actually happen you know what I mean and I think if the horror had stayed realistic it still could have been gory and messed up but I think it would have made the message come across a little bit easier at least for me because it's like when it's so unrealistic and ridiculous like come on it's just not doing anything for me it felt very much like I'm a 13 year old boy and this is like super edgy it also really reminded me of 120 days of Sodom which I haven't read the book, I watched the movie before I knew it was a book, and there are certain things that they do in there that they also do in the book Cows, so it kind of reminded me of that, and I see a lot of people like that review it kind of see the parallels between it, but 120 Days of Sodom, I think the message that they're trying to get across with that story comes across a lot clearer than the message with Cows. Like I said, it definitely set out to be like a gross and disturbing thing 
but it was just so unrealistic at times and like I said it felt very much like I'm a 13 year old and I'm gonna think of all the gross nasty stuff that I can and put it into a book and it just objectively it was just a bad book and that was like the main thing that really made me like want to stop reading it because like the violence and the disgusting stuff happening was a lot and it was really kind of grossing me out at certain points but like I said there was no redeeming factor with like an actual good story or a good book underneath all of that so I was like what is the point of me reading this just to torture myself for another hundred more pages and it's not even going to be a good book basically I don't know I think you should only read this book if you are used to reading like very very extreme things and it takes a lot to kind of freak you out or make you squeamish or whatever because there's definitely like a lot of things described in very great detail and I don't really get bothered by too much but just if you're not I don't know someone that reads extreme stuff like this you probably shouldn't read it basically there's like trigger warnings for literally anything that you could think of I also learned a new term because of this book, coprophagia. I don't know if that's how you say it, but <laughs> I saw somebody mention that in the reviews and I was like, oh, what is this? And I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, that, that does occur a lot in this book. Anyways, that was my thoughts on cows. Like I said, I finished about the halfway mark. I was like a hundred and something pages in and it's only just over 200 pages. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that the ending was kind of stupid as well, so I don't really feel any strong will to finish this book for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, the next book I'm going to read is Brother by Anya Allborn, which I am excited for. I think I actually will like that book because I've read one of her other books and I think her writing style is really good. The gore and the descriptions that she included were just like perfect. Like the kind of horror that I'm looking for if I'm going to read a really disturbing book and gory book. So I am excited to read that one. I might take like a little bit of a breather and like this is so out of character but I'm honestly like should I read a coho book just to kind of wipe my brain from like the last book I read. It just it just hurt my brain honestly. So I think I might take a little breather and just read something else first and then start brother which I don't think will be nearly on the same level and I do think I'm gonna enjoy that one at least I hope I do I really want a winner for this video because clearly it's not been going well so far today is the day that I'm starting brother by Anya Allborn so wish me luck like I said I am really excited for this one I think I will really like it because I've read one Anya Allborn book and really enjoyed it and I've heard great things about brother so we're gonna go ahead and start it. All right, I'm about 60 pages through Brother now, and I think I already mentioned this, but it's basically about like this family of serial killer like cannibals that live kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and it seems like they typically seek young women to kidnap and kill. So it's definitely been very interesting so far. We just learned something about one of the characters um, Michael, who is, like, the one that we're mainly following because he isn't fully, like, into this like the rest of the family is. He doesn't want to do it, but he has to. So we were just told a little bit of something about him and his past, which I'm not sure if it's in the synopsis because I didn't read the synopsis before going into this, but it was something that I didn't know beforehand and wasn't expecting, so it's kind of interesting. And I am very, very interested to see where the story goes. I think this, when I read like disturbing books, this is the type that I like where it's actually got a good plot and good writing in very disturbing aspects to it, but it's not just like fully extreme gore just for like shock value, which I feel like most of the books that I've already read for this video can fit into that category. So I guess you could say this one isn't as extreme as the other books that I've read, but it still has disturbing content. And like I said, the writing and the plot is very, very interesting. It has my attention and I'm very into the story and want to see where it goes. So 
I'm gonna keep reading. Alrighty, we are back where we started. I have finished the last book for this video and that was Brother by Anya Allborn. I didn't update too much while I was reading it because I didn't have too many strong feelings while I was reading it. Just that I was very interested in the story and wanted to see where it was going. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So Brother definitely was the longest book that I read for this and it was definitely more of like what I would call a kind of slow burn disturbing horror book like it's obviously a very messed up premise with like these serial killers and like cannibals and all of that but the truly like really messed up and disturbing stuff doesn't really happen until towards the end when the entire story comes together so it is like I said a very <laughs> slow burn to get to the disturbing stuff I think the story progressed nicely it had a very steady pace to it but nothing really crazy or mind-blowing happened like it wasn't a very like gory slasher extreme novel but more of like a deeper look into familial like generational trauma and really how the situation that we are raised in really affects us long term and into our adult life and obviously this story takes a more extreme turn on that with like this family of serial killers but it still is very very interesting and there is that deeper aspect to it. I think Anya Alborn does a great job of creating these characters that you can really kind of connect to and like actually care about and they are very like deeply complex. So I am going to give Brother five stars and I'm so excited because we got a winner for this video and I also know that I like Anya Allborn's writing a lot and she's got a whole bunch of books available on Kindle Unlimited so I can go and read those now. I'm very, very excited for that. But I think reading that book in contrast with the other books that I read this week and just like this whole video in general was kind of a little experiment and it has really taught me that I personally don't like very extreme horror or things that are gory and messed up just for shock value and a lot of themes in extreme horror where it's very sexual and there's a lot of bodily fluids. It's just not my favorite thing. I think it can be done well where there is like a good developed plot and good writing then I can like it. But if it's like, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't read a lot of splatterpunk, but from what I have read, I feel like a lot of splatterpunk books are short and they're just shock value, one crazy thing after another, after another, after another, which is fine if you like that kind of thing. But this has kind of taught me that that is not my preferred type of horror. And I do like disturbing things or extreme things when the story is also written well and has an interesting plot because I feel like with other splatterpunk books um I kind of felt this way when I read Cows where it was just like a lot of crazy things happening to keep you from thinking about how bad the book actually is on its own like without the disgusting factor what do you really have you know what I mean so this was an interesting experiment. I don't know if I'll do it again just because it kind of hurt my brain a little bit. Really, I just blame that on cows, which I don't know what I was expecting. I knew it was going to be messed up, but it did hurt my brain a little bit to read that book. So I don't know. If you guys want to recommend me books to read in the future, if I do decide to do another vlog like this, that would be super cool. But for now, I think we're just gonna leave it there. We can do a little recap of all the books that I read. So I'm gonna start with the order of like the one I enjoyed the most to the least. So up top we have Brother by Anya Allborn. Obviously that got a five star but it is vastly different from the other books that I read in this video because it's not splatterpunk and it's not very very extreme but it still is disturbing in a deeper sense. And then after that, I would probably say No One Rides for Free. Although I didn't give this book a rating, I think it's still kind of held higher in my mind than the other books. 
Like I said, it was very, very fast paced, so I just wanted to keep reading it, which I didn't feel that way about the other books that I read. So in third place, I think I would put 100% match. I gave that one three stars. I didn't think it was that great, but I didn't absolutely hate it. And I wouldn't say that I necessarily regret my time reading that. Then in fourth place, we have Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates. That one I think I said I gave two stars or two and a half stars. Um, I just was mainly bored, but it is a messed up book, so it wasn't right for me, but give it a try and maybe you'll like it. And then last place, obviously I had to put Cows because I did stop reading that one because it was just disgusting and I think just not good. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time, hopefully.